why do electric vehicle charger installs cost so much money? I've recently been on panels for everything electric as the expert for talking about home chargers. In fact, many panelists have often asked me and turned to me for certain questions on answering questions. And one of the questions that came up was, why do electric vehicle chargers cost so much to install? And in this video, we're going to be talking through that because chargers can cost anywhere from £800 and I've even seen prices, well, 8,000, the sky is the limit. This video is going to be giving you my top tips on what you can do to reduce the cost of a home install, why they cost so much, and why you shouldn't be tempted to get your granny cable out and use that instead. Now, one of the major factors in the cost of an EV charger install is obviously the cost of the EV charger. In fact, when researching this video, I trawled the internet of wholesalers, basically had a look at what the prices of the cheapest EV charger I could find that meets UK government regulation regs at a UK wholesaler. And the cheapest one I can find is £300. Now that sounds not like a lot of money, but it was from a brand I've never heard of until researching this video. It's from a brand I've never tested, obviously because I've never heard of it. And for not much more money, for 450 you can find a charge that I have tested, a well-known brand, and a brand that is capable of using Octopus Go Intelligent. So for £150 extra, a well-known charger and that go intelligent will soon save that 150 back in money so there's also other charges things to consider so some charges are tethered some are untethered some have two sockets rather than one socket so you can do two cars at times uh, some ev chargers have free face power and unless you have free face power you're not going to be wasting your money on one of them but why do they cost this much money? Now, the more cynical of you will think that EV charge companies are running a racket and monopoly between each other and price fixing, so their charges are more expensive. Well, if this was true, which it's not, but if it was true, then the brands that in the UK, we have huge competition here in the UK. It's one of the most competitive markets. If there was a racket like that going on, someone would make a charger cheaper. And also, the two big brands here in the UK, brands that sell the best, brands that are capable of Octopus Go Intelligent, have a £150 difference to them, to the cheapest and the most expensive, different brands. Now, if that was true that they were price racketing, fixing prices, you want to have £150 between them. They'd be pretty much 5 or £10 between them. So that's obviously not going on. So why do they cost so much? Well, we'll get back to that in a minute, because first we need to talk about the labour element of your install and some tips I have to bring down those costs. So in a minute, we'll take a look at the more complex installs and how to bring down the price, but let's look at a typical household install. Now, typically you're gonna pay around about 900 pound for an EV install. And if we take away the 450 pound of the charger, you're obviously left with pure profit, aren't you? Obviously not. There is other things to consider on even the most basic of installs. Now, one thing to consider is no matter how new your fuse box is, no matter how new your house has been wired, whoever fits your EV charger will not fit your EV charger into your existing fuse board, unless it was the electrician that originally wired your house. And the reason for this is simply because they'd rather not touch someone else's work, because if in a week later one of your light bulbs goes, a circuit breaks, something goes wrong with your house electrics, they can't be blamed. They've not touched the house electrics. They're more than likely going to split the tails directly near the meter, as close to the meter as they can, and stay away from any existing electrics. So they can't be held at fault at a later date. Now obviously as I just mentioned it's also good practice to try and fit the EV charger, the fuse board for the EV charger, as close to where the electrics come in your house. This is typically in a DNO cabinet where your meter is, where everything is stored. They tend to split your tails there and put a little sub electricity meter there and then wire into your EV charger. So let's look at what the actual costs are to put it in there and get everything done. So first of all, you're going to need a fuse board with SPDs. SPDs are basically fuse protection system. If you've already got a recent solar system, then you should be able to save a little bit on what the SPDs are. But typically, fuse board with SPDs, about £100. Uh, some Henley blocks, about 20 quid. Uh, miscellaneous parts, screws, fixing cables, etc., about £100. Now, if you need an outdoor fuse board, uh, because you can't, they can't put it in your DNO cabinet because it's already full of stuff from solar, then add about another £20 on top, and you're left with about £210 worth of money left over after paying for all that all that, all that stuff. Now, typically, an electrician 
It obviously, they might work for somebody. It might, it might be a one-man band, but typical electricians are on at least £200 a day. Some run a lot more, but typically around the country, about £200 a day is about your average price what you pay a member of staff as an electrician. Now, depending on the area and the skill level, it may obviously be a lot more, but they usually be able to install about two EV chargers a day. So about £100 labour for your install. Now, we need to take out insurance testing equipment, van, fuel, you know, in time to price your job up, time to fill in the DNO paperwork after they've installed it, because there's more paperwork to do even after they've done it. Fill out the warranty registration information, pick up your charger from the wholesaler, uh, all the van and fuel cost in, include in getting all that, the possible chance that they might need to come back out to you, the possible chance that, uh, that, you know, there may be a fault later on that they need to come back out to, the pricing up of the job beforehand. But we also need to consider bad debt not everyone always pays so there is several elements for an electrician to price in so they're probably only making around about 70 pound profit per job after all these bits and pieces and also we forgot to mention they also have to pay membership to an electrical body most most electricians are members of nic or another various version of a trade body they've also got membership of that to pay for now if you're having a bigger install or you're having a long run that requires any groundwork so digging up of a driveway you know garden anything that requires any digging anything that can't just be a cable clipped around your building something that's more complicated you could save a small fortune by doing some of the work yourself or paying a semi-skilled person to do it instead because if you're paying an electrician to do the these these more you know basic jobs you're paying a highly skilled engineer to do some digging that a semi-skilled person can do instead so maybe ask your electrician if you're you know friendly with a local electrician if you've got some groundwork ask them if you just did that work yourself put some ducting in and put the pipe you know put the cable in or just ducted it with a cable and they pulled their own cable through what they charge just to connect on both ends of the electrical cable you'll probably find that most electricians are more than happy to do this as long as they are allowed to specify what cable they want and then go and get someone else to do the manual labor for the electrician instead and that electrician will be probably more than happy to do that same if you've got to sort of lift a load of floorboards up and put it through a terraced house from the front to the back again you know you might be better doing some of this yourself or even lifting the floorboards up on the day the electrician turns up so they can just whiz their wire straight through most electricians are really decent people really friendly people and also bear in mind that you might want to talk about this at the time where they're running the quote especially if they came round to run the quote some electricians can be put off by the more tricky jobs and are very difficult to get hold of on the phone after they've left now what is the reason the actual charger costs so much let's get back to that issue so why are ev chargers so expensive because you often see people in the forums telling you they got their ev charger fitted for a hundred pound well they probably did because back several years ago a lot long time ago now it seems to fit for me when i first got my first ev charger the prices back then were lower for a couple of reasons but let's start with the main reason there was a government grant that gave a huge whopping £500 off the price of your charger. So my £100 install back then was actually £600, but we're still miles away, even with that discount from what charging costs are costing now. So we've basically gone from a price of £500 to a price of about £900 now. So why has it gone up so much? Well, it's basically to do not only with the cost of the physical charger, but also the regulations and wiring have changed. Back then, 10 years ago, when I had my EV charger done, Wiring regulations weren't as strict. They weren't as evolved to EV chargers. EVs were very, very new. The chance of me seeing another EV going out in a day was extremely limited, where now you see them all the time. So wiring regs have progressed to keep up the pace of EVs. So they've introduced stuff like having SPDs, which basically protects the more, more expensive electrics of your EV charger from breaking. Yes, you have to pay to have that installed at the time of your EV charger, and that adds to the cost. But EV chargers have changed. The first EV charger I had was a dumb device. It didn't do anything special. It was just a switch. It turned on and turned off the power. That was basically it. EV chargers now have evolved to have they have to have, they have to be smart under government regulation. So they have to be able to be controlled by an app and be connected to the internet and be firmware updated. They have to have that as part of the regulations. They also have to have stuff like to keep up with the wiring regulations so like pen fault detection which stops earth spikes they have to have rcds and 
of type B RCDs and type A RCDs for stop DC leakage, they have a lot of safety devices contained within the physical charger from where they were, where they were just an all in on device. The actual physical safety of an EV charger is huge. And that's where most of the money's gone. But they've had to, they basically, rather than you buying several different devices and then stopping them on the side of your house and then having an EV charger, EV charging companies know that you need these devices or EV chargers, so they've included them in the EV charger. So you might be tempted, why do I need an EV charger? I'll just get a granny cable. If you think that, then maybe say this video here that I did with EFIX, explaining why granny cables are missing all that safety device and why it's important to have 